system that I, I, I teach is a system based on a figure called 10 men. That's T-E-N-M-E-N. -E and it's called 10 men because the missionaries in the South Sea Islands, when they found people making this figure, considered it to be an abstract portrait of 10 men doing side straddle hops. Side straddle hops means that the body forms rather an X. And I will try to show you where the X's are when I have finally formed the figure. But it starts with opening A. And then the thumb is dropped. There are several ways of doing this, but this is the way I teach it. And then the far little finger string, traditionally, is caught in the teeth. And then the hands crisscross so that the index finger picks up and you pull apart. And you have two loops on your index finger with the straight across or the transverse strings being the near index strings. Now let me do that another way. Again, opening A and drop. Now, I'm going to turn my hand slightly. My left hand, or my right hand, can go behind and curl under and lift up the far little finger string until my hands assume their natural position. And then my right index can slip under so that I have the straight across string on the top of my index. And by holding my thumbs here and pulling apart, I can form the loom that way. I call it the loom because from this particular position there are many things that you can do. But the thing which is done in order to make the figure is to reach under all of the strings until you find the near little finger string that you pull from under with your thumb back under all of the strings until it reaches its original position. And then with the same thumb you reach up and under the top near index loop until you have two strings on your thumb. And then you have to Navajo those loops, which is to say the bottom loop goes over the top. Quite often it is done with the teeth. Now I have perfected keeping these index loops separate so that I can just drop to finish a weave. If you cannot remember to do that, or you have trouble in the beginning, you can note that there is a string over here with a wrap on it. You can take that string, that index string, off with your hands, and you have finished the loop. And you can do this, and you see the little eye forming in the center, which is a little test to see that you have done the A weave right. I call it the A weave, but right now we just call it a weave. Now, in order to weave again, you will wish to take the thumb loop and put it back on the top of the index. You can do that by simply coming up under. Notice that you want to come under. If you were to come and lift it off coming in from the top, you would lose where the straight across or the transverse string is and it would not be in a proper position. So you want to always come under and lift off so that your transverse strings are your near index strings. So now you're ready, back in the loom position, to weave the same string. The near little finger string by pulling under it, the top index string, and I often weave in a very strange fashion coming over with my middle finger until I can hook, sliding my thumbs toward the center. And the second time you do not finish the weave. You reach over with your middle finger down in, I call it going into the well, down in and picking up the near lower index string and pinning it to the top of your index. Dropping your little finger and you'll notice that I do not allow this to become loose. I hold that string. I pull my hands so that my thumb and my fingers are stretched as tight as I can and I roll my hand, my thumb pointing down, 
and there is the Tin Man figure. And like I said, there are ten X's. One, two, three in the top row. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three in the bottom row. Three, four, and three is ten men. I envisioned small changes in order to make different figures. You can envision pulling the near little finger string. Uh, that is the first one I learned, so I called it A. You can also reach and pull the far little finger string under the near little finger string. I call that B. You can push the near little finger string down and pull the far little finger string over and you get another different weave. I call that C. And you can weave more than twice and you can get different figures every time you use different combinations of weaves. For example, A, weave, finish, reset. C, weave, finish, reset. A, extend. And ACA has an entirely different sort of reality. And indeed, all of the figures you make will tend to have differences. Some of them are subtle, some of them are very large. But you will always have different figures when you have different weaving patterns. And there is something which makes the Tin Man system and string figures in general very mathematical for me in the sense that there are inverse weaves. Which is to say that if I were to weave the A weave, the near little finger, Navajo the loops, finish the weave, reset the loom, and then put my thumb on top of the near little finger string and down flip it and weave that down flipped reality and finish that weave, I go back to my original loom because that down flip is the inverse weave of the original weave. And it doesn't matter in which order I weave. If I weave what I call A prime, finish, reset, and then A, finish, reset, they cancel each other. And that is exactly the same thing that happens with B and B prime and C and C prime. Now notice that when I pull the C, I have to put my hands together, grab the inside, put my thumb down, in order to achieve the C prime weave. At least that's the way I do it, and that then shows that that's the inverse. If you want to go a little bit further, you could do the D weave. Now the D weave is a little more difficult to explain and a lot more difficult to accomplish. I push the near little finger string under, reach and catch with my middle finger to hold it up, take my thumb back, reach over and pull go under and pull that near little finger string back. I'm actually going under and then over the far little finger string. Under and then over is D. D prime is to down flip whenever I am here. And of course, D prime followed by D is nothing. And E, you might well imagine, is to push the near little finger string over and then pull it under. And if I push it over and pull it under and down flip it, I get nothing again. And those are my original 10 weaves. Now, with these 10 weaves, A, B, C, D, E, and their inverses, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and E prime, you have the possibility of making 100 different two-weave figures. You can, for example, have A as your first weave and then any of 10 as the second. You can have B as your first weave and any of 10 as the second, and so forth. And it becomes quite important if you're to make any sense out of that number of figures and you really want to learn which ones look best and how to make more complex figures, to keep records. And you should train yourself very early on if you really want to learn string figures 
to keep records of that which you have done so that you can check off that which you like and that which you think is useful for further exploration. Now, there are all sorts of other things that you can do with the Tin Men system. And one of the most delightful, immediately delightful, is to make three-dimensional figures. In order to make a three-dimensional figure, the way I figured out how to do it, is to temporarily store your top index loop. And then to put your hands together, and with either hand first, take your index and go under the index loop of the other finger and to pull the other finger completely free. Now you have two loops on the other hand and then you take the free finger and come under both of them, pull them down together and you have doubled that loop. I call that cotillowicking the loop because I actually learned how to double loops like that when I learned an Eskimo figure which is called two brown bears running away from each other. But at any rate, if you cotillowick the bottom loop and then reestablish your loom and treat that double bottom loop system as one string, you can weave the A, Navajo, finish, reset, A, Navajo, extend, and you will see that there is this sort of string which is straight across which is sort of lost in the middle. Turn your hands back. I use both my little and ring fingers to pull down and I have a three-dimensional figure. And if I turn my hands you can begin to see that that is three-dimensional. You will also see that I am trying to make a triangle with my fingers, my thumb, my two extended fingers, and my two fingers on my wrist, on my palm, should make sort of a triangle, and I now have three dimensions. You can obviously make three dimensions out of any weaving pattern, but the one which I use in order to make the ten men, or the basic three weave pattern, after I have made my three weave, my three dimensional loom is to actually consider this non-transverse of the two far lower index strings and to pull from under this string and to weave it and to reestablish and do a B prime. And then when I lift, I use my little finger to reach and pull down the three third dimensional string in such a fashion as to allow the little finger loops to slip off and become an integral part of the three dimensional figure and then I have a much more interesting to me much more interesting figure. There's also another thing that I do. I reach with my ring finger into the same hole that the little finger is used, reach back from underneath, drop the thumb loops off onto the ring finger so that I have both of those captured and I have a natural way to have this on my hands and I can do many things while it's that way. Then I relax the middle finger and consider these strings on the top. Now, there is the single string and the double set. If I take the single string so that it is turned a half loop, half rotation toward me onto my thumb on both sides and then reach up with my thumb from underneath so that I have that straight across string on top, I have the possibility of coming in to these two loops pushing this bottom string away and looping out so that I capture that in that fashion and I drop my thumbs and I pull apart. And that's not a very interesting figure until you remember that you have captured on the ring finger and you can come in and reestablish your thumbs there and pull your ring finger down that three-dimensional quality 
And now, if I can use my teeth, I make that x on that facet of the three dimensions, x on that facet, and on the bottom, I have that sort of straight across string and the two x's. And I happen to think that that is a beautiful three-dimensional figure. It's easy to hold on the hands, and it is an example of what you can do from the Tin Man system using the Catillowic on the bottom index loop. Now, there's another thing that I do with the Tin Man system in order to get complex figures, and this is without the three-dimensional quality. And it is what I call the almost collapse. And it is a way that I make more complex figures so that they don't become tangled masses of string in the center, which will happen if you have no particular plan when you string five, six, seven weaves together. And that is that I frustrate the collapse of the figure caused by the inverse relationship. Remember, if I weave an A, finish, reset, A prime, finish, reset, I have nothing. So let me weave my A, finish, and reset. Now, before I weave my A prime, I'm going to stick my thumb up through the lower index loops and over the far lower index, and then pull the near little finger string. And I call this A universe A. And I use a capital A. And then the weave that I am pulling now a prime is a small a with a little prime next to it. So a, a universe a prime finished and reset does not release its information. It is in the figure and since it's almost just that one string's different, it tends to be an open sort of figure. And I reset my loom and I do a b prime. Now, a, a universe A prime, B prime, tends to be an open, complex figure. And indeed, any time you are barely frustrating the release of the information caused by the prime relationship using a, a universe string, you tend to get these sorts of figures. Or at least it gives you the possibility of getting them. So I posited, I made up, I described lots of different universes using lots of different complex weaves. But the five universes, or the, the five new universes, this is just basic everyday old universe, the five new universes are over the far lower index, pick up any of the st strings, A, B, B prime, is A universe. If I go over only the near lower index, pick up A, B, C, I have B universe, B universe, C. If I go over both lower indexes, I call that C, capital C universe A. And if I push the near lower index so that I can reach and pull down the far lower index and pick up, I call that D universe. D is just like on the D weave is under then over, the D universe is under and then pull through. The E universe is what you might consider to be the same kind of a thing. I reach and pull back and go over like that. So that this actually goes over and then I pull through. That's a little more difficult to explain. Under, pull through the hole, over, pull through the hole. D and E universe. That makes 50 more weaves because each of the universes have 10 weaves. So if you have 60 different weaves now, you have 60 times 60 or 3,600 two weave patterns and it quickly becomes apparent that you have a great deal of difficulty in making all of the figures. That's why you should concentrate on making the simple figures and getting a feeling for which ones work together so when you make more complex figures, you can use that information. Or you can just start trying to make different figures doing anything. But if you don't keep 
a framework of reference. And if you don't keep notes, you quickly forget the beautiful figures that you discover. And you will find two weeks after you've made them that you don't remember how you did them and you can never recover them because you think differently or for whatever reason. And all of my students have made the world's greatest string figure early on in their careers and then forgotten how they made it. So I just caution you to try to develop the skill of keeping order.